the global semiconductor chip shortage is accelerating the shift to electric cars. Just have a look at the sales of BYD, NEO, Xpeng, Tesla, and many other electric car automakers. And have a look at the sales of petrol vehicles over the last few months. Now, peak ice happened in 2017. They are actually down 20 million before the chip shortage happened, eroding economies of scale for ICE vehicles. There is very little investment going to new ICE vehicles in 2021. All of the momentum now sits with electric cars. This is how the global chip shortage is accelerating the shift to electric cars. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you. Hope you've had an awesome day. And thank you for your support, for subscribing to the channel, for liking the videos, and for just generally supporting common sense. That's what this channel is about. It's about supporting a better world and common sense. Now, the Driven.io recently reported that the global chip shortage is accelerating the shift to electric vehicles, a leading European auto analyst said. As car makers increase EV production to account for a change in product mix. Now, I've been yammering on over the last two months, as you I'm sure you know, longtime viewers, about the fact that companies like Toyota, Ford, General Motors, and various other legacy automakers are saying that the reason their sales are down over the last quarter is just because, just because, one reason, there's a semiconductor chip shortage. But that doesn't explain why sales are dramatically up for Tesla, up for BYD, up for NEO, up for Xpeng, up for many other pure electric car manufacturers. Massively up, in some cases up by 300%. And yet, other car makers are saying they just can't build the cars. Well, disruption is happening in front of our eyes right at this moment. In September, 17% of all cars sold in China were purely electric. Purely electric. The year before, that number was less than a quarter of that. We have very quickly reached a turning point in history in which the electric car has become the vehicle of choice. Now, it could spell the end of days when cars are churned out to fill dealer floors before being flogged off by predatory pricing tactics. In his latest analysis, leading auto analyst Matthias Schmidt outlines how legacy car makers in Europe that are faced with a shortage of semiconductors and are opting to push out premium vehicles with larger profit margins in order to balance the books. In Europe, there are strict limits around the amount of climate change inducing emissions from the vehicles a car maker sells each year. Now, a good indicator of this is the fact that Tesla makes hundreds of millions of dollars every year from automakers paying them to take some of their emissions credits so that they don't pay multi-billion dollar fines. In 2021, it was reduced, the emissions that car companies could make in Europe, to just 95 grams of CO2 per kilometer. Car makers that miss that mark face huge fines, as Volkswagen founded in 2020 after its ID3 launch was delayed but larger and premium vehicles referred to as overweight Luxo barges by Schmidt have a typically corpulent emissions profile or they put out a lot of emissions. So much so that in the past, luxury brands such as Ferrari and Lamborghini among others have sought waivers from the EU restrictions. What do you think? Do you think Lamborghini and Ferrari should be exempt from paying these fines for overly polluting or the fact that their cars pollute massively more than others. Personally, I don't see why they should be treated any, any differently to anyone else. Now, look at Rematch, or Rematch, I should say. Rematch are building the world's fastest cars, and they're electric. So what's stopping Ferrari and Lamborghini? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, this situation is causing car makers to offset the increased emissions from luxury vehicles with more plug-in electric vehicles, or purely electric vehicles, says Schmidt, because Although the latter have a much smaller and at times non-existent profit margin, they will help reach those carbon emissions targets and prevent companies from paying huge fines or giving Tesla cash. 
with tough fleet average EU CO2 emissions targets on the table, car manufacturers are having to balance their carbon books and are increasing PEV sales mixes with Germany and France both recording new incredible penetration highs in August in order to compensate for those overweight Luxo barges that are quick to turn heads as they are quick to turn profits, says Schmidt. Now, this strict emissions policy, which contrasts starkly with countries like America and Australia, where there are no regulated limits or very few on vehicle emissions, only a voluntary one here in Australia, instigated by the Federal Chamber of Commerce Industries, means that Europe is hitting new highs in terms of electric vehicle sales. Now, another reason that Europe is hitting new highs is simply because more cars are becoming available. Tesla is selling every car it can get into Europe, every car it can get into the United Kingdom. If companies like BYD were selling electric cars in Europe right now, just imagine how many cars they would sell, especially if those cars were priced at what they cost to buy in China. Figures complied by Schmidt's show in August this year, almost one in four cars sold were plug-in electric. Year-to-date figures show that almost two in five cars sold are plug-in electric with an almost equal split between battery electric and plug-in hybrids. But as you can see, in countries like China, the cost of fully electric vehicles being on par with ICE vehicles shows that when customers have a choice between a plug-in hybrid and a fully electric car, what do they choose? 17% out of a total of 20% in the Chinese car market were electric. So in other words, around 95% or about 92% of Chinese buyers, when faced with the choice of electric versus plug-in hybrid, choose electric. Now, if you look at numbers in Europe for electric car sales between January and August of this year, the figures are incredibly misleading. Now, why are they misleading? One key reason, they do not show the trends. The trends are dramatic. The difference in January versus September in terms of the percentage of vehicles sold which are electric is astronomical. If we continue at this rate, if we did continue at this rate, at the same rate of growth in electric vehicles per month that we've seen this year, then by 2025, every vehicle sold in Europe would be fully electric. Just think about that. Now, Schmidt says that the other side of the global chip shortage coin is it could see less cars made unless they've been ordered by customers. Tesla, the leading electric car maker, pioneered online and made to order car manufacturing. Other car makers and EV startups are actually following that lead. Well, they're following Tesla and almost every lead, but that's one of the things they're following. Think Mercedes-Benz, which is actually selling its EQC and EQA online in Australia, and Honda, which on Tuesday became the first Japanese car maker to start selling online. Now, I made a video recently, which was extremely popular, and it had, I think, 500 comments about how Ford is losing customers because customers are having bad experiences with dealerships, and in particular, customers who want to buy an electric car. Now, a lot of this video was made on. People commenting, sending me messages, telling me about their experiences that they've had with Ford dealerships and the predatory tactics they see there. And this is one of the key reasons why companies like Mercedes and Honda and others are following Tesla into the online only sales model where the price is the price. It's a fixed price. You don't have to haggle and wonder if you didn't get as good of a bargain as the person who came in before you. Polestar, essentially a division of Volvo, launched in Australia on Friday and will also sell purely online and use a similar showroom style setup to Tesla. Now, there's a number of different other Chinese automakers employing very similar methodology to sell their vehicles in China. I believe this is the future of cars and any legacy automaker who bucks this future will simply be ignored by customers eventually. Schmidt thinks the shortage will mean legacy car makers 
will have to rethink how they produce vehicles at volume, missing, moving away from the prioritizing at scale manufacturing to reduce production costs. While traditional OEMs were already altering their mantra up to 2025 to profit in the new volume before scaling up to achieve economies of scale in the new EV world post-2025, few could have expected the severity of this downscaling of traditional high volume models multiplied by the supply side issue. If the chip issue doesn't solve itself soon, we could well see the premature demise of high volume, pile them high, sell them cheap, ice models earlier than expected, he says. And I think the sooner, the better. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think cars should be expensive. In fact, I think the more cheap cars we have, the better off we are as a society. I don't think it's a good move from anyone to go and get a $100,000 loan for a car. This happens all the time. This is not smart financial sense. I think it's good to live within your means. But I also think it's good to offer people who can't usually afford a car the ability to purchase one. And the ability to purchase one that isn't a pile of steaming junk, pouring out fumes, which is what old cars do. Old ice vehicles, just usually the catalytic converters are worn out Usually, they just spit out fumes and you'll be sitting behind one in a McDonald's drive through or in traffic or wherever you are and thinking, why on earth am I choking on fumes? The sooner we get rid of those rust buckets, the better. One of the ways we can do that is by offering cheap electric cars. Now, if governments adopted a strategy around importing cheap electric cars, such as those in China where you can buy an affordable electric vehicle for $5,000, US which is actually not bad. Then we can get rid of these cheap, junky cars, pollute the atmosphere, and replace them with affordable, clean transport. Now, obviously, this is all happening much quicker than anyone ever predicted. And right now, the West, Europe, doesn't have access to most of these cars that the Chinese do. But like I've reported on many of my videos, that will all change over the next few years. That's good news. Thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for liking. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Hope you have an awesome day too. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.